Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to look at the studio discography of America's great southern rock band, Leonard Skinner. Legendary band. All right. Their 70s stuff is beyond legendary. Of course, then we had the plane crash. Lost Ronnie Van Zant, a couple of members of the band. They retooled later in the decade of the 80s. All right, and still are out there touring. They're on their final tour. The final tour scene's been going forever. They've actually, they've released studio albums all throughout the 90s and the 2000s, all right? Some a little better than others. Uh, we all know that the, the, the stuff in the 70s is absolutely classic, all right? Some people don't like the albums that have come out after. I do, all right? Uh, not all are as good as some others. I still think the 70s output is by far the best, but... I like all the Skinner albums. This was actually pretty tough for me, and I think my even at the top, even the '70s stuff. There are some albums that I just sometimes I'm more in the mood for than others. Uh, hard to rank this discography, and to me, it's almost you know it's two eras, obviously. So what I did was I, I tried real hard. All right, let's figure out the '70s stuff first, and that was hard because all those albums are just beyond great. And then the, the more recent stuff is very, very solid. And I like them all kind of, there's not one of them, yeah, maybe a couple stand out more than the other. They're all like equally very solid. I know, like I said, I know some people don't like the, the latter day stuff. And that's totally cool if you're one of them, right? I, I get that because it's, it's not quite what they put out in the 70s. But as far as like modern day Southern rock, it's very good. You know, maybe they shouldn't have called themselves Skinner, right? Whatever. I, but I still think they put out a lot of really solid, enjoyable records since uh, 1991. And I dig all of them to a certain extent, right? You know, they're not all amazing top to bottom. And a lot of them have way too many songs on them. But there's a lot of great tunes on a lot of those albums. So, of course, I'm going to start from my least favorite all the way to my favorite uh, again, I will go and say that there's, I, I don't dislike any of these. So if one, if one of the ones that I'm mentioning is the bottom of my list is one of your favorites, that's pretty cool, actually. All right. I don't dislike any of these, but I had to kind of rank them as best I could. But I'll just go and say I don't dislike any of them. Uh, I just like some more than others and some obviously a lot more than others. Right. So let's get started. And we want to see your list down below. So make sure at the uh, when you're done watching, Put in your five favorites, your ten favorites, or rank the whole discography. Whatever you want to do and tell us why. All right, so starting off uh, at the bottom of my list, I'm going to go with 20. And I will say, I enjoy this record, all right? We Ain't Much Different, Voodoo Lake is Killer. They do a cool version of Traveling Man, updated, right? Never Too Late. None of us are free. Uh, you know, just trying to figure out some of the ones that I kind of bring it on as a good tune also. I, you know, this is a uh, good modern day. Well, modern, not anymore, right? This came out in the late 90s. But um, I just thought that this was a, a really good retooled Skinner, big lineup. You know, bringing all these southern rock stars from, you know, the Outlaws and Blackfoot. Let's all get together and let's make a revamp Leonard Skinner. And I, it's fun. It's a good album. I always enjoyed it, right? Same thing with this one. You know, Edge of Forever. Yeah, it's got working, right? Full Moon Night, Preacher Man's great. Tomorrow's Goodbye. All right, title track, Edge of Forever. Very, very solid record. Okay, just, um, I always enjoyed it. Uh, I like this one a lot too, Last of a Dying Breed. I, I really enjoyed the last two Skinner studio albums. You know, here you got uh, Rosington and Ricky Medlock, you know, just becoming the real force of a guitar duo. Uh, Johnny... I thought has always done a swell job, or a fine job, swell, it's kind of like an old man term, uh, <laughs> has done a fine job uh, fronting Skinner all these years, you know, doing these songs justice in honor of his brother, I, you know, nobody could replace Ronnie, but I thought I always thought Johnny did a fine job, and I think Johnny's a fine front man, I always liked him in this spot, uh, the title track, Last of a Dying Breed, is fantastic, uh, one day at a time. What else? Home You know, my problem with uh, my only little problem with the last couple Skinner studio albums is I think that they try to also latch on to that kind of modern country thing a little bit in hopes that maybe you know more people would buy their albums and come see. I mean, they 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 pack them in on tour anyway. But you know, obviously all these 
older bands who are releasing new studio albums want to sell more studio albums, whether it's CD or downloads or streams or whatever. And I think that they injected some songs into the, into these albums that kind of could very well appeal to some of these younger, you know, modern country fans. And I, I don't know if it really worked, maybe a little bit, but there's some stuff on these albums that kind of could appeal to that crowd. You know, Homegrown's one of them, uh, Ready to Fly, Something to Link, Live For, you know, some... Good teachers, also a good song. I, I don't know. I dig this album. It's just a, it's a it's a good listen. There's still some great kick ass guitar work on there. Fun album. Uh, the Last Rebel. This is a pretty pretty good album. I think. It King baby. Uh, you know, a lot of great ch- tunes on here. I just uh, it, it, this is a rough and gritty album. I think, and you know, for Skinnerd in the '90s. Not bad, not bad. But you know, not a lot of promotion. Uh, I don't think this did too too well, which is a shame. Which is a shame. As uh, I dig it. As this one, God and Guns. Again, some folks, you know, kind of thought that Skinner's trying to be too much Americana. You know, every song is about you know living in the South and drinking a beer and on the farm and you know, great to be American. And I get all that. Uh, still unbroken. Those are kick-ass tune i always like that a lot simple life again simple life probably could have been a hit with the country crowd i think um southern ways also all right skinner nation kick-ass tune all right god and guns is a great uh, great anthemic hard rocking skinner tune so i like that album uh 1991 this was the big comeback right this sold pretty well but I think, you know, you had the, the longtime fans, the skeptics, who were like, oh, there's no Skinner without Ronnie type of thing. Uh, but, man, Smokestack light, uh, Lightning, Keeping the Faith, Southern Woman, uh, Money Man is Good, Backstreet Crawler. I, you know, I think this is a very strong record. That captured the vibe of, you know, classic Skinner, but, of course, here we are in the 90s. I think out of all of the post-1990, you know, the, the reunion albums on i think my favorite is vicious cycle i just really dig this album a lot i remember seeing him on this tour you know i got huey up there and ricky and you know, gary it's like it's like a big southern rock party people you know that's how i like it right dead man walking red white and blue you know, just coming around. Yeah, I mean, that should have been an enormous song. I know it did, did pretty well for them. But, man, I, I always thought that, you know, based on you know, 9-11 and all that kind of stuff, I always thought that Red, White, and Blue would have been kind of a massive, massive hit for the band and one of those songs that would be forever played at every Skinner concert going forward, just kind of like Sweet Alabama and Freebird. Okay, it did for a year or two or three, but didn't really have the uh, staying power. But, anyway, this is a, a rocking album, I think. A lot of guitar firepower on that. All right, now we're going, obviously, to the 70s stuff. So I'm going to go with uh, Nothing Fancy next. Classic album. It's kind of, you know, there's not much that separates these 70s albums. Uh, you know, I kind of struggled with how to how to put these. You know, this one's got Saturday Night Special, which is killer. Uh, you know, On the Hunt, which I love. Those are my, easily my two favorite songs on here. The rest of the stuff is very strong as well, but those by far are my two favorites. Uh, coming up next, I'm going to go with uh, Give Me Back My Bullets. One of the best title tracks ever. Love it. Uh, Every Mother's Son. Fun stuff. Uh, double Trouble, right? Cry for the Bad Man. Going to be searching. Some great stuff on here. You know, and this could rank higher. It's tough, I, you know. I was like, God, how do I how do I rank these these seventy Skinner albums, right? Second Helping, I'm gonna go next. Needle in the Spoon, all right. You know, everybody's favorite Sweet Home Alabama. I can't deny it's a great song. I never really need to hear it again. Uh, Call Me the Breeze, man. You know, there's so many great songs on here. Great, great album. Second as second albums go. Follow-up albums to a hot debut, sophomore, whatever you're going to call them. That's a fine one. Uh, coming in at number two for me, and number two and number one could flip-flop. I almost didn't know which one to pick. I went with one over the other just kind of just because. But my number two is a great album, and it would be their final album before the plane crash I'm talking about. Street Survivors. 
Mr. Gaines on board on co-lead guitar, making a triple amazing attack with Alan Collins and Gary Rosington. This is a special album, people. This is a Skinnerd revitalized, ready to take on the world. And you know what? If it wasn't for that plane crash, I guarantee you that Skinnerd would have been the biggest band on the planet if they weren't already close to it. I think, uh, you know, you look at, in the history of rock and roll, at a tragedy, whether it's, you know, a, a band, you know, in a plane crash or a car crash or an overdose or whatever the situation might be. You look at any band or rock star who's completely ascending career was derailed by a tragedy that stopped them or him or her from becoming like a complete global force. I think Leonard Skinner is one of them. You know, you can, you can talk about, you know, Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix and whoever else, but man, I think as far as like a band, this band with this album was ready to just blow up everywhere on this planet. And we all know what happened, right? But back to the album, you know, What's Your Name? Ooh, that smell. Awesome song. One more time. I mean, just top to bottom. Top to bottom. You got that right. You, baby, you got that right. I just love this album. Great songwriting, great vocals, killer guitar playing, melodies just unmatched. A great album. Perhaps only bested by pronounced Leonard Skinner, their debut. You know, some of these songs for some might be a little played, right? But, uh, man, just there's not a bad one on this whole lot. A One of the most amazing debuts in rock history, I think. I Ain't the One. Tuesday's Gone. Give Me Three Steps. Simple Man. Mississippi Kid. Things going on, poison, whiskey, and of course, the mighty free bird. Right? I just, you know, when it came down to it, I looked at these two together, and I just had a real hard. You know, the more I thought about them, like I love this album, and I just had a hard time not giving the number one slot to this. It's close though. It's close. I mean, all the like I said, all these seventies albums are just—they're not separated by much. Uh, I think most of us love them pretty much equally. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, a magical band. A magical band that, you know, I have always dug. And uh, I know I say this a lot, but, you know, sometimes there are certain bands that you kind of grew up on and maybe really enjoy. But as you've gotten older, you realize just how they're, they're, they were even greater than you imagined back when you were younger. Because your taste changed a little bit. Your taste matures. Uh I have just found that Leonard Skinner, uh, like I said, always dug him. Uh, really love him a lot now, and I love a good amount of their catalog. And that's yeah, you know, that's I because I, follow, I that's that's kind of me. It's like if there's a band that I really like, I tend to try and really give them some love throughout their entire discography. And while we all have you know favorites and albums we may like more than others, uh, I have no issue with kind of staying with a band for the duration. Okay, so let's recap. Coming in at number one, pronounced Leonard Skinner. Coming in at number two, Street Survivors. Coming in at number three, Second Helping. Coming in at number four, Give Me Back My Bullets. Coming in at number five, Nothing Fancy. Coming in at number six, I'm going to go with uh, Vicious Cycle. Coming in at number seven, 1991. Coming in at number eight, God and Guns. Coming in at number 9, The Last Rebel. Coming in at number 10, Last of a Dying Breed. Coming in at number 11, Edge of Forever. And coming in at number 12, but by no means uh, a stinker, number 20. So again, uh, that's my ranking. Like I said, not much separates the top half, not much separates the bottom half. I am a fan of this band, and I'm a fan of all these albums. Uh, you know, obviously some, and you know, I will say... Some of the more, the, the later ones, like especially the last couple, 
I think a reason why I may rank them a little higher than some of the 90s albums is because uh, my wife likes Skinner. And she really started getting into Skinner like in the last like 10 years. And so we together listened to like God and Guns and Last of a Dying Breed, you know, Vicious Skycore. We, we listened to those albums together a lot. And if, I, yeah, if you guys were watching this show, she doesn't really like a lot of the music that I dig, right? So we don't really meet on musical stuff. So when there's a band that she, of mine that she likes... Uh, I try to, you know, take advantage of that, right? So we together have listened to a lot, those last like three or four Skinner albums together quite a bit. So that's why for me they may rank a little higher because that's kind of special, right? We always tie music to things in our life, right? Or experiences and all that kind of stuff. So for me, if I got a band or a couple albums uh, that my wife digs that I like as well, uh, you know, so anyway, so uh, not much separates these albums, though. They're all fantastic in their own way. Obviously, the 70s stuff is just absolutely legendary. The other stuff, if you haven't heard it, there's a lot of good material on those albums, all right? Regardless, you know, and some of you are probably like, like I said, no Ronnie, no Alan, no Skinner, no Stevie, no Skinner. Well, you know what? If that's if you're going to just kind of shut it all out, there's nothing I could do to, to change your mind. But all I will say is I recommend you give these albums a chance because there's a lot of really strong and fun Southern rock to be had on all the post-reunion albums, in my opinion. So let's see how you guys rank them. Which one of your favorites? Give us your top five, your top ten. Rank the whole discography, whatever you want to do. But more importantly, tell us why, right? Because we all have different experiences. We all like things differently. So... Be curious to see which albums you guys like and why. All right. And also visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube all the damn time. So uh, I'm back, as you can see. More stuff are coming. We got lots more of these ranking the studio album shows coming up in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, we uh, I'm trying to reschedule now that I'm back for a few weeks. Uh, I'm going to try and reschedule uh, my guest stars and see when we can fit all that in. Uh, I got to talk to Mike Antonelli about doing the Miles Davis thing. That'll either happen this weekend or next weekend. And uh, I got to talk to Butch. Got to talk to Chris. Uh, I got to get Jeff Young back on the show, but he's going to be going out to um, to Dayton, Ohio to start off some tours, some gigs that he's doing. So if you live in the Dayton, Ohio area, uh, he is playing out there, I think, on the 22nd. So you got to make sure you check that out. He's doing a whole solo set. He's got lots of stuff that he's working out for you guys. So you don't want to miss that, right? So uh, I'll see you guys probably tomorrow. If not, definitely over the weekend, right? So have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.